Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'll be explaining you what is water jet machining, including the working principle of water jet machining, then the complete diagram setup, individual components of that water jet machining setup. Then we will see the process parameters, then advantages, disadvantages, and lastly, we will see the applications of water jet machining. So, let me give you a quick brief and uh, overview of the lecture. So, we will be starting with the working principle, then all the components, then we will discuss the diagram, then all the individual components of that setup, and then we will see the process parameters and advantages, disadvantages, and lastly, the applications. So, let us start with the video. So, water jet machining is an unconventional machining process in which high velocity jet of water is used for machining operation. So, working principle of water jet machining, let us see. So, in water jet machining, material is removed through erosion effect caused by a small diameter but high velocity jet of water. It is also known as hydrodynamic machining. So, hydrodynamic machining means water that is in motion. So, hydro that is water and dynamic means motion. So, water which is in motion is used to create erosion effect ultimately causing the material removal and hence we can achieve machining operation. So, a fine jet of water exits a specially shaped nozzle at a high velocity of around 900 meter per second. This jet strikes the workpiece and provides the cutting action. The kinetic energy of this water jet is converted spontaneously into high pressure energy inducing high stresses which will ultimately exceed the strength of the target material and ultimately cause the machining or the material removal. Now, let us see the major components of the water jet machining system. Hydraulic unit, intensifier, accumulator, filters, water transmission lines, on-off valve, water jet nozzles, water jet catchers and fluid additives. Now, let us see the working setup for this water jet machining operation. So, purified water will be entering through this particular hose and it will travel to the intensifier. In intensifier, the pressure of this purified water that entered is increased up to 800 times and this high pressure water then it will be passed to the flexible hose and there is also a accumulator that is connected in parallel. This accumulator will actually provide a surge support. Surge means whenever the pressure demand or the nozzle then when it will be traveling. So, it will kind of control or regulate the pressure within the predefined limits for that particular workpiece. And the final high pressure water will actually go into the flexible arm which will have 6 degrees of freedom so that it can move anywhere. And finally, the high pressure jet of water will be exiting this nozzle and ultimately strike the workpiece. So, this is the workpiece and this is the working table. So, this high pressure high jet of water, ultimately it will be governed by various factors that we will see downstream. There are some other components as well. One is electric motor that will be driving this hydraulic oil pump which will be pumping the oil. And there is an oil reservoir from which any shortage in oil that will be compensated. So, high pressure oil will be supplied to this intensifier. So, we will see the intensifier working in detail in upcoming slide as well. But here in intensifier, this oil will be ultimately responsible for increasing the pressure of the supply water. There is one critical component that is called as on-off valve. It will be situated just prior to the nozzle and the function will be to cut off the water jet supply as soon as the machining has completed or if there is any safety or failure issues. So, this can be manual type or automatic type. So, automatic control or manual control on off wall will be situated. Now, let me explain you the intensifier action using a cross sectional view of intensifier to see how the pressure of the water increases and then we will also see the functions of individual components as well. So, herein you can see two images one at the top, one at the bottom, it is ultimately a cylinder in cylinder arrangement or a double acting cylinder arrangement wherein there are total four ports. Two are for the water, two are for oil. Now, you can see two images. One corresponds to forward stroke, one corresponds to backward stroke. How the working happens? Now, let us see. So, this is for the forward stroke wherein water inlet, it will be at the left side and high pressure water, it will be outlet from the right side. Similarly, there is a backward stroke in which water inlet, supply water inlet, it will be from the right side, whereas the exit water, that is a high pressure exit water, it will be from the left side. And the oil, it will be entering correspondingly in left or right direction. Now, let me explain you how the pressure in water increases actually in intensifier in both the strokes. So, you understood there are two strokes and in both the strokes, pressure will be increasing. So, let us 
see first the forward stroke here in water that is entering in the left side so this is the low pressure water supply water and it will be moving and getting accumulated finally at the end of the piston so this is a double acting piston wherein towards the end this is the supply water initially now when the hydraulic pump starts so high pressure oil it is getting supplied through this port and let me take a different color so this is the port wherein high pressure oil will be supplied and this will be traveling and pushing the plunger or the piston towards right side and ultimately that will be transferring the total pressure to the water that was initially here so the high pressure oil total pressure will be transferred through the piston through this plunger to the water and ultimately here we can see high pressure water being exited from the right side now let's see for the backward stroke as well so in similar concept now the supply water it will be entering from the right side and it will be traveling through the outer periphery and initially it will be deposited here okay now when the hydraulic pump it will be starting to supply the hydraulic oil through the inlet port of the oil this, this is the inlet port for the oil and it will be traveling here and pushing this particular piston towards left side now and as soon as this piston it will be pushing towards left side this plunger that you see it will be pushing the water that was initially deposited here and this will be causing the increase in pressure to a very high value so the final high pressure water now it will be exiting from the left side so this is the overall approach of how the pressure increases in the intensifier now let's see the individual functioning of all the individual components now the entire hydraulic unit it will be consisting of the electric motor and the hydraulic pump so hydraulic pump it will be ultimately pushing the high pressure oil into the intensifier and up to 20 mega pascals this is the pressure of the supplied oil now second is intensifier as i have already explained above so this the function is to increase the water pressure up to 380 mega pascal and this is determined based on the size of the piston so more is the piston more will be the area and more will be the pressure generated by the oil that will be ultimately transferred through the piston to the water third is accumulator which is also known as shock attenuator it is plumbed or placed in parallel to the high pressure intensifier the function is to smooth the pressure spikes now pressure spikes can happen due to inertia because plunger and the piston will have inertia and in the forward and backward stroke during that particular movement when it happens when it goes forward or backward there will be certain time lag due to which there will be minor pressure spikes that can generate and to smooth that we will be using this accumulator so that final pressure of the exiting water will not be impacted much and we can attain plus minus 2.5 percentage control fourth is filter filter this is placed in the supply line so that any unwanted material or debris can be trapped in so that pure supply water will be entering into the system otherwise over a period of time this will cause erosion or contamination even choking of the system can happen if we are not using purified water next is the water transmission line tubing that carries the high pressure water up to the nozzle entire unit is called water transmission lines which can be either joints or tubings or flexible or hard hoses and as we know the high pressure of the water it will be of the magnitude 380 mega pascals so we have to have the tubing which can sustain these kind of high pressure next is the on off valve this is a critical component which is necessary for safety aspect this can be of manual type or automatic type whenever the machining completes this will be turning off the unit automatically so that any further machining or any health hazard cannot happen if there is any fault in the machine this on off wall will be turning off this complete machine so that there will be no health hazard to anyone nearby next is water jet nozzles so water jet nozzles this is the main critical component that will ultimately govern what is the diameter of the exiting jet of water and the diameter of the nozzle that we will be keeping is 0.07 to 0.5 millimeter for most of the applications and for food application it can go up to one millimeter but not beyond that we use a specific type of material that is called synthetic sapphire to create this nozzle because that is resistant to wear and it is easily machinable last is catchers so the purpose is to minimize the exposed length of the water jet because the water jet that will be exiting will be at very high pressure and to safeguard 
the nearby operator and to minimize the noise as well. So, it, this will be kind of acting as a safety shield. Now, let's see the process parameters for water jet machining. There are total four process parameters out of which three are critical parameters and one is non-critical process parameter. So, three critical parameters are water pressure, nozzle diameter and rate of travel and non-critical is the standoff distance because there is little to no change in the diameter of jet within 25 millimeter of the nozzle. Standoff distance remains more or less constant throughout the machining operation and hence can be considered as a fixed parameter. The other critical parameters those are water pressure, diameter of nozzle and the rate of travel. These are critical because depending on the type of workpiece, type of material, thickness of material and so on, we can change these particular parameters to achieve the desired machining result. Similar like if we want to machine a thicker workpiece, we, have, we can increase the water pressure, we can increase the diameter of jet and so on. So, these become critical parameters. Now, let's see the advantages of water jet machining operation. First is no tool resharpening cost because there is no tool at all. The, that is water jet only. So, we need not incur any cost. Second is minimum set of width. So, as compared to the conventional type machining operations wherein we need larger width, larger footprint for the machine to set up. Here, we need a smaller width. Third is easily automated. We can easily program the machine and it can cut the desired workpiece. Next is omnidirectional cutting. It means it can cut in all the directions. So, the workpiece, it can be situated and the flexible hose, it can move in all six degrees of freedom so that it can obtain omnidirectional cutting. Next is dust free process because water jet when it will impact the workpiece and the material removal starts because the water, it will be converted into mist form at the periphery or at the vicinity of the workpiece that will entrap any kind of dust that comes out from the workpiece. So, ultimately, we will not see any dust. Next is high cutting rates. As we can govern the pressure of the water that is supplied to the workpiece, we can achieve the desired cutting rate. Next is absence of heat affected zone. So, as water itself acts as coolant as well, so it will not create any heat affected zone into the workpiece. Pre-drilling is not required when shape cutting. So, water jet, as we can control up to 0 0.07 millimeter, we can create directly without any pre-drilling. So, in other wire EDM or any other unconventional type machining operations, first we need to pre-drill as well. So, so, that the wire can pass from that particular point and then start. Whereas in water jet machining, that is the advantage, we can directly start without any pre-drilling operation. Next is reduction or elimination of airborne dust due to cutting. So, similar like dust free process or reduction, then capable of cutting a variety of materials without a substantial change in system components. We just need to change the process parameters and that's it. Other than that, we need not change any other tooling or any setup change. Nothing is required in water jet machining. Next is multi-layer cutting while maintaining quality of cut for all layers. So, if we generally for food applications wherein we need faster cutting. So, three or four stacks will be cut all together one over top of other and we will not see any major substantial difference in the cutting. So, the rate of cutting will be enhanced 4 times, 5 times, 6 times depending on how much stack we want to cut in one go. Next is health hazards associated with cutting materials such as asbestos or fiberglass are minimized because there is no airborne dust created due to water jet machining operation. So, in conventional type machining wherein if we have to cut these kind of materials or machine these kind of materials like asbestos or fiberglass, there will be lot of dust that can go into the system of operator into the body of operator that will be creating health hazard. Whereas in water jet machining operation, this is avoided. So, this is an advantage. Next, we will see the disadvantages or limitations of water jet machining. First is, the equipment is moderately expensive. Now, equipment, initially we have to put lot of capital investment to buy this equipment because it is expensive. Second, it is not suited for very hard or non-porous materials. So, all type of materials cannot be machined using water jet machining. Third is brittle materials may crack. So, there are chances of cracking of high brittle materials if we are using water jet machining to machine it. Fourth is contaminated water must be treated before disposal. Now, we know that once the water strikes the workpiece, it will machine the workpiece, it will carry some material out from the workpiece, but it will also carry that removed material along with it. So, prior to final disposal of this waste water, we have to ultimately decontaminate or filter it out. Last is noise and high pressure requires safety considerations because 
here the pressure of the water is of the magnitude 380 megapascals. If that strikes the human hand or human limb, that can be fatal. Similarly, the noise, it is very high because when it is strikes the workpiece, the pressure, it will also get converted into sound energy. So, we will be able to hear and it will be treated as a noise. Now, let's see the last that is applications of water jet machining. First is deburring. So, to remove burrs from non-ferrous parts, that is areas that are normally difficult to access such as narrow openings, blind holes, internal cavities, etc. can be accessed easily because we are having a flexible hose. So, in conventional type machining or in other non-conventional machining operations, we are not having that kind of flexibility or flexible hose. Next is cutting of PCBs or printed circuit boards. So, in printed circuit boards, we have to make intricate cutouts very intricate shapes that can be easily achieved using flexible hosing of the water jet machining and even the small diameter will help in making all those small cutouts. Next is cutting of board materials. Next is cutting of lightweight fiber reinforced plastics. Next is wire stripping, especially for the fiber optic cables, we will be using water jet machining. Then cross cutting. Next is cutting foods. So specifically for fish and lamb. So we want precise cut, very clean cut. So, there we are using water jet machining to cut out larger fishes into smaller pieces and smaller sticks. Next is cutting web materials. So, which are very flexible, very delicate that can be easily cut using water jet machining. Last application is cutting asbestos. So, all these are the applications of water jet machining. I hope you have found the video helpful. Please do like, share and comment. Also, please check out the video description. You will find all the important links added there. You can go and see for yourself. Also, please do support us. If you are new to the channel, please do subscribe and press the bell icon. Also, do join our channel membership. Also, you can support us financially. All the options are there in the video description. Till next time, take care. Bye.